Yo, what's up? It's Jamon. You are watching Templar Guardian Dominating Blow Full Build Guide. So this is going to be a complete guide, meaning that I will also uh, make some leveling section in the path of building. Maybe I will also explain some stuff in the video. I'm not sure right now. And league start, what to do, what kind of gear to get, and then the end game. So there's going to be and there are going to be everything in this video. So expect a full guide. I will also explain all the gems as if you don't know anything. So this is a new player guide mostly. Because 3.15 is coming soon. Uh, we will see, watch the trailer in a couple of days. So we are all excited. Let's see what is going to happen. So this is a minion build. I normally don't play minion build. Uh, people are mocking me all the time in my Discord. And this is actually the only minion build that I play. I actually have a guide. It is an old guide because maybe I put it two years ago or something. I didn't even had a thousand subscribers and the video got a lot of views and I was like what's going on? <laughs> Why are people watching this? I was very surprised. So maybe people just want to see different minion builds. So back then that build was a little popular thanks to me maybe I'm not sure. Because the leaderboard was like always two or three people total to playing this build. Uh, this is actually a, a very underrated uh, minion build. Maybe because it is played uh, mostly played on a guardian or maybe it is because a melee minion actually. So in some scenarios actually you will notice the downside of playing a melee minion build but overall this is a solid league starter hardcore viable which I uh, myself played a couple of times and there are also videos maybe if you can find them they are in my channel I actually died at 97 level in hardcore so this is a hardcore viable dirt cheap to start easily clears all the leveling act 1 to 10 with 4 link you don't even need a 5 link all right you can just get a 5 link when you start mapping if you want uh, very easy to start very fun build in my opinion but for some good boss dps you need some investment obviously but not crazy investment actually this build is overall very cheap so if you don't know me maybe you just discovered this channel i make lots of build guides so consider subscribing and liking these videos maybe share with your friends also join my discord uh, there are lots of members right now we chat all the time so yeah in this part we are going to take a look at the templar guardian ascendancy and see what i got uh, what works for this build first of all radiant crusade this is what i get while leveling the first labyrinth 20 percent to all elemental resistances which makes it very easy to cap your resistances because it is sometimes hard to cap your resistances while leveling this actually helps a lot while there are at least five nearby allies you and nearby allies have own slot while there is at least one nearby ally you and nearby allies deal 10 percent more damage so you obviously understood the final sentence, but what is Onslaught if you don't know? Onslaught is a buff that grants attack speed, cast speed and movement speed. So because Dominating Blow is a skill that spawns lots of minions, plus we are gonna have Herald of Purity uh, minions. So you actually have more than 10 minions all the time. This actually requires only 5 minions, 5 allies. Uh, allies also means minions. Minions are actually allies, alright? But they are not party members. Do not... Uh, you know mistake those uh, means are actually allies so you will have permanent onslaught basically so you will actually move way faster plus your means also gonna move faster and deal uh, more dps thanks to attack speed unwavering crusade this is what i get in my second labyrinth uh, while leveling nearby allies have attack speed move speed area of effect which is good actually because they have a slam skill which is an area skill actually uh Herald of Purities also have that slam, by the way, that is actually the most powerful attack that uh, they do. Nearby allies intimidate and unnerve enemies for 4 seconds on hit. Unnerve doesn't matter for this build because it is for spell builds. Intimidate is actually... Uh, intimidated enemies take 10% increased attack damage. This is an attack build, so that works for us. Unnerve is for spell, so that doesn't... that, that isn't important for this build. So this is actually fa for uh, even more DPS. Bastion of Hope, I really like this. 50% chance to block attack damage for 2 seconds every 5 seconds. So every 5 seconds you actually get a buff that basically caps your block. So this character is very tanky against attacks. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If you are blocked in the past 10 seconds, which are gonna be all the time, you and nearby allies cannot be stunned. So this character is actually stun immune easily, but you need to get hit by once, you know. Uh, so you have pretty much a lot of time, you know, let's say, stun immunity. If you have attack recently, you and nearby allies have 10% chance to block attack. If you have cast a spell, block spell. 
uh, we obviously we actually use both of these uh, dominating blow is an attack so we attack all the time so you will also get that 10% attack block all the time and for spell we actually use common caution which summons our minions to us that all I explained in the gem section uh, so that's why you can also get that block spell damage uh, every now and then so that's pretty much it so finally this is my final labyrinth uber labyrinth time of need 80% reduce effect of curses on you so you can safely skip a curse flask if you want you are almost immune to curses every four seconds regenerate 30% of your life over one seconds this provides a burst of healing every four seconds which is very nice sometimes once you get to low life you actually notice this and bam you are at full health so this is very good um that's pretty much it so this is the jam section i'm gonna explain all the jams so you will first understand the mechanics how this build works then we will explain take a look at the gear section so first of all dominating blow this is our main skill but actually these are not the main boss killers uh, in the end once we invested enough we are gonna check that later on so first of all dominating blow is a melee minion skill you actually need to attack the target first so normally you don't have any minions once you attack the target uh, you don't have to kill but one if you kill they will just spawn automatically from the corpses actually so you need to attack all right uh, go into the monsters because it's a guardian character using shield lots of block life whatever the character is actually tanky that's why this is not a squishy you know character so you don't actually have any problems going in attacking the monsters so this actually requires some active play style this is not an afk minion build that's why i like this build this is the only minion build that I play because it is not an AFK build, you know. So yeah, you basically go in, attack, kill the monsters or not kill. Again, if you hit, you also have a chance uh, to, you know, summon the minions. So in the end, you will have lots of dominating blows. So normally your maximum, not normal. So let's explain this. There are three different uh, sentinels, all right, Dom dominating blow minions. Uh, nine of them are normal monsters which you can spawn all the time even in a boss fight again once you are in a boss maybe like Cirrus shaper you just attack the boss and then you will have a chance to spawn these guys all right you don't need to kill anything normally <clears throat> but killing obviously spawns them faster so you will have uh, minions faster while mapping so you will have maximum nine normal sentinels these are actually the only minions that you can spawn without killing anything so we actually also have three magic sentinels so they are actually magic monsters you can just kill them and spawn them uh, in a map and finally one rare sentinel again you need to kill or hit a rare uh, enemy you actually need to kill them yeah uh, so because of these reasons you cannot actually spawn uh, magic and rare sentinels in a boss fight that's why you will actually lose some damage because of that uh, the main uh, actually boss killers are herald of purities this is normally a buff, uh, reserves our mana, but these are actually also spawns minions once you hit or kill the target. Again, the same stuff. But you can spawn all of these all the time, there is no downside. So once you spawn also these guys, these actually have very better single target damage. So these are actually our main boss killers, but obviously dominating blows total, you know, 9 uh, dominating blows, uh, sentinels, normal sentinels. They also deal significant amount of damage. So let's take a look at the gem setups for Dominating Blow first. So Dominating Blow, because it's a melee and physical skill, that's why we are using some of those uh, gems, you know. Uh, melee physical damage, because it provides more physical melee damage. Brutality, again, more physical damage. Multi-strike, so you actually attack more than once. And again, the actually minions are also using multi-strike, so these actually gems are both for us and the minions because we are also going in and attacking with dominating blow we actually also get benefit from these gems fortify so we have 45 45 buff which reduces damage taken from hits i will just put the description maybe on the screen and impale this is actually an impale build because that's the most common way to play physical builds impale just to store some of the damage taken to the enemy and once you further hit the target you start to deal also that stored damage so once you start attacking a target spawning your dominating blows and once they started attacking after a couple of seconds you will notice that you are actually killing the boss faster so you just need some time to spawn all your uh, minions uh, store those impales whatever all right this is how basically it works so while mapping we actually do not use melee physical damage 
because we actually need something to boost our clear speed. That's why the final gem, the seventh gem actually, is a replacement for melee physical damage, which is melee splash. Supported skills deal splash damage to surrounding targets, more melee splash area of effect. This is how you clear maps. This also works for us, so you can actually spawn dominating blows easier. Uh, that's pretty much it. So do not forget to gem swap this uh, with melee physical damage whenever you are at a very big boss, like a conqueror, shaper, guardians, Cirrus, whatever. You don't need to do this in a map boss, unless maybe you are doing a delirious map or something. So normally in normal maps you don't need to do the swap. But uh, on you know high-end bosses, you absolutely need to swap so you will have better boss DPS. So here we go purity, and because I already explained this a little, that's why I'm gonna continue with this one. So this is normally a buff that reserves our mana, but this actually also spawns minions whenever we hit a target. 20% chance to summon a sentinel of purity when you hit a rare or unique enemy. So this also works for bosses, obviously. Uh, because uh, we can because these are minions and we need this for more damage we actually link this gem with uh, also supports so similar stuff multi strike brutality and impale once you invested enough you will also have minion damage in your helmet so this is going to be actually a five link in the end these minions actually has you know millions of dps uh, alone actually so total uh, you can normally summon let's just check four summoned sentinels of purity there is also a helmet enchant which is uh, gonna be your end game item probably. So once you also have that plus one maximum sentinel labyrinth enchant on your helmet, you can actually summon five sentinels, which um, alone, you know, all of, um, let's say, each of them deals a couple of million DPS. So you can expect at least 10 million DPS from these guys alone, plus your dominating blows. So in the end, you can easily achieve, once you invest enough, more than 20 million DPS. Uh, with not crazy gear actually, way cheaper compared to most of the other minion builds, uh, which is uh, way more than enough to clear maps, kill, you know, usual bosses, conquerors, shapers, serious, uber elder, all kind of stuff, you know. So uh, definitely a very powerful alternative uh, for minion builds. So let's just also explain this real quick. Uh, if you are at early game, maybe you don't have enough mana, mana reservation, do not try to link your Herald of Purity with lots of gems. So definitely drop a couple of maybe support gems if your mana isn't enough. So don't make any mistakes uh, because we also reserve some auras, which I'm going to explain now. That's why we need them first. Maybe after that, you can reserve those Herald of Purities. Once you start investing, get some mana reservation. All right. Don't forget that. So buffs, let's just check our buffs. Pride. Aura, 50% mana reservation, nearby enemies take at least 20% more physical damage, raising up to 40% as they stay in the aura. So because we are obviously in the melee range, you can just stack that to 40% in 4 seconds. So that's why you will notice that DPS increase after a couple of seconds, because this is also gonna stack, you will spawn those, all your minions, plus impale. So after a couple of seconds, you will start that the boss is gonna actually take uh, more damage, compared to the first couple of seconds. Dread Banner, you and nearby allies have 20% chance to impale, because this is an impale build, we obviously need this. Also, you and nearby allies have a 19% increased impale effect. Uh, that's pretty much it, straightforward, uh, this is for impale. Plus, I'm also using a generosity um, support, which actually boosts that uh, Dread Banner's effect. So, definitely a good um, support gem. So, other gems, let's just check those. In my weapon, uh, you only need a 3 link, that's why I am using this in my weapon. Summon Holy Relic, so this is a minion. Uh, it can die, it doesn't matter, you can just spawn it later on, you know, once you notice that it is dead. This actually triggers a Holy Nova skill, which applies lots of life regeneration to us and also minions, which is very nice. Uh, so it is, it, is, it is not very important that maybe this minion died or anything, you can just spawn it alright whenever you notice it. So this is just for some additional... Um, healing actually which is very nice summon carrying golem uh, golems grant additional physical damage for non golem minions which is obviously all of our minions because this is not a golem build also in the end you can invest for an anomalous uh, quality which is not the default quality of this gem it is an anomalous which is a drop from highest blueprints uh, which even increases the buff effect further so this is also good for additional damage for our minions 
And finally, feeding friends is support. Uh, you need to link this to your boat, holy relic, and carrying column. Basically, a three link uh, weapon is enough. Uh, feeding frenzy, you know, where's that? Means from support skills effort, four percent chance to grant feeding frenzy to you on hit. So once you get that feeding frenzy buff, uh, I will just put the description on the screen. I don't want to say anything uh, wrong. You will get some bonuses, you know, damage stuff like that. Just check the description uh, because I am right now talking from my mind, you know. Uh, so maybe I will say something wrong. That's why I'm gonna put the description on the screen. So once these minions also attack the boss or whatever, once you get that frenzy, feeding frenzy buff. You will have actually even more damage, you know, your minions actually, yeah. Uh, erase Spectre setup. This is a 4 link in my clothes, you can just put it somewhere else, maybe on your uh, in your boots. So the uh, most important thing is you don't want to put anything in your helmet other than Herald of Purities. You will understand better that, uh, you know, uh, you will understand it better uh, in the uh, gear section, yeah. Because uh, helmets can actually have plus 2, plus 3 depending on the item level, gem, uh, minion gem level. That's why we want our Herald of Purity in our helmet. So apart from our helmet, you can just put any gems wherever you want. Obviously, dominating blows are in our six link uh, body armor. So yeah, but you can just put these maybe uh, Spectre setup, that carrying golem, holy relic setup, wherever you want. All right. Uh, so these are in my glows. Raise Spectre, meat shield. So they are going to be tankier. And Plus, this is also where my uh, mobile skill is. Shield charge, because we are playing with a shield. This is actually very fast uh, in this kind of build, so I highly suggest you to play with this. You can also play with dash, but I actually don't like dash that much. Uh, I like shield charge better, but dash is actually way better for Cirrus. Uh, only for that boss, probably. Because in the last phase, he spawns lots of lasers, and if you shield charge through them, you actually get debuff. So you will have a high chance to die. That's why dash is actually way better for Cirrus. So consider gem swapping, but uh, the color is obviously not the same. If you can white color your uh, glows from Research, Vorichi, from June, Encounter, you know, Betrayal, you can just do that later on and maybe swap that dash or play with dash all the time. If you don't care about dying in Cirrus, maybe just play with shield charge all the time, which is what I did because I like shield charge way better. It is way faster in maps. Plus a life tap, so it is actually free. So what specters am I using? So I will just uh, mention a couple of those, but uh, yeah. So you can just... Maybe if you know anything better, you can just go for that. Because minion builds are not my speciality, I don't know much specters. I asked a couple of other minion, uh, you know, players. They mostly recommended these, actually. So the easier ones to find, uh, monkeys. You can just get these in Asian Fields in Act 7, I believe, if I didn't delete the clip. Or maybe I'll just shoot a new clip. I'll just put it right now. So there are two different monkeys. They are actually um, not monkeys, maybe apes. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not an expert on monkeys, all right. Uh, host Chieftain and Carnet Chieftain. So these are actually different. You need to spawn one of each because your race Spectre limit is actually two uh, once you have a higher gem level, I believe. So you can summon two different Spectres. One of these actually provides power charges for your minions and other is uh, other one provides frenzy charges so power charges obviously grants crit chance which is not that important but obviously helps and frenzy charges they are actually way more important more damage and attack speed because normally frenzy charges provides 4% damage more damage and 4% attack and cast speed but for minions yeah, these charges actually provide way more than that uh, I'm not sure how much they provide, but minions actually get uh, more benefit from charges. So definitely they don't get 4% more each charge, alright? They actually get way more than that. That is how this game works. Uh, the minions actually get more benefit from uh, charges in this game. Uh, so these are the easy to find minions. You can just use these at uh, early game, up to red maps. Uh, because I won't actually recommend these in the late game, because these monkeys have very low health. Uh, maybe if you can also support them with minion life, even more, you know, defensive options. Maybe they are going to be tankier, but these die very easy in fights like Cirrus and beyond maps. They just die instantly, you know. They have very little health, so you will also uh, lose that uh, DPS buff. That's why in the end I used Arena Masters. These are way tankier. Uh, these are, by the way, only found in Drox Influence maps. So you actually, you actually have to spawn rocks influence in one of the Atlas uh, quarters, you know. Um, 
Atlas region, let's say there are uh, eight different regions. So once you spawn Drox, you don't need to go in the Drox, you know, the, the Conqueror's map, all right? Once you get the Infilium, bam, the, you know, the screen flashes, the Drox monsters spawn in that map. You can just search for one, all right? Arena Master, Bay Tankier, provides attack speed and move speed, I believe. Something like that. If maybe I can find the description, I will also put that. So this is actually Bay Tankier. Uh, these, I actually started using these after a while and I haven't even seen them die, you know, once. They are very, very tanky. So I highly recommend you to play with these. If you know anything better, just go for that. I am not an expert on uh, Spectres. Alright, uh, that's it for the setup. And final setup, another 4-link. Uh, actually, not 4-link. These are not linked at all. You can just link them. It doesn't matter. So that's 4 gems, alright. These are in my boots. You can just put them wherever you want. Uh, desecrate so you can just spawn maybe specters if they died you know something like that you can also put desecrate in your maybe second weapon slot if you want so you can just safely skip this uh, desecrate actually uh, maybe use it in your inventory or whatever all right you don't need to have this all the time you can maybe use a portal gem or maybe you can put dash here that makes uh, actually a lot of sense because it is also green you can just swap that dash with desecrate whenever you need to summon maybe specters if they died or anything so yeah, uh, Coma Caution, this is a minion spell, so you actually summon your minions to you, because these are melee minions, if you maybe entered a new um, room, let's say, maybe you moved very fast, maybe you, your minions are left behind, you know, just press this, spawn everything, you know, resummon them to your uh, location, so you won't die, so you will have your minions uh, fighting by your side, that's it. Molten Shell, this is our buff card skill. You can easily put this on your left mouse button because this is instant, so you don't actually stop to cast it, you know. This provides a lot of um, absorption equal to a percentage of your armor. This is an armor and block build, uh, by the way. So you will have actually a lot of armor with the flasks up and other gear, you know. And that's why you will actually have lots of uh, absorption. You can also use a Val Molten Shell, which is a cooldown, so you need to press it uh, manually. So just put it on somewhere else, on your keybinds, you know. If you use that, you will actually get even more shield. So you can use that for maybe map boss. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, any hard encounter in a map, you know. Maybe Legion. Uh, yeah, that's it. Finally, Vulnerability Curse. Uh, if you invest, you know, more, maybe you have a Vulnerability Curse ring or a Glows. You can uh, skip this. This is just for actually early game, alright. You can just um, cast this manually at a boss. You don't need to use this at anywhere else. Just for the map boss, Conqueror, Shaper, whatever you are killing. Just use this once. It has more than 10 seconds duration. And just start, you know, attacking, dominating, blow, whatever. And once you maybe summon your minions, uh, recast this. So, you know, refresh the curse. You can just do this. In the end, you can just safely skip this gem if you have a curse on your um, gear. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is all the gems. Now I believe we are going to continue with the gear. So we have come to the gear section. This is going to be like this. Um, I will just explain every piece by piece. And once I am at it, I will just explain it like this. This is your first option. Lower budget, bam, medium budget if it exists, you know. And after that, this is your final upgrade. This is the most expensive one. So I will just finish a piece and then move to the next one. Alright, this is how it is going to work. So for weapon... The only cheap and effective, I believe, option is Scorch Claw. You can just get this even at day one, actually, but I'm not sure about the prices in a Neve League because maybe lots of people are gonna play this, I'm not sure. So, this is normally very cheap, very easy to find because this is also right now in core game after 3.14. This was normally a boss drop earlier, but right now it can drop from anywhere. Uh, so, why is this good? Means have attack speed. Increase and reductions to minion damage also affects you at blah blah value, whatever. Minions deal damage, 70% damage. If you have hit recently, which is pretty much all the time. So this actually provides a lot of DPS. This club also has a decent attack speed, more than 1.7, which is very fast actually. And some decent physical damage. So you can actually attack very faster. And this is a fast weapon, alright. Uh, so you can just uh, summon dominating blows and other minions, you know, um, herald properties way faster. While leveling, you don't need to use anything special, just use a fast, uh, maybe physical uh, weapon. So attack speed is very important on your weapon, actually. 
if it also has some decent physical damage you can actually maybe kill monsters faster so you can spawn those dominating blows faster that's why physical damage on your weapon is actually not that bad shield early on on's heritage i believe that is how it pronounced uh, this is very cheap lots of armor life lots of block chance and where is that this actually lowers our max block attack damage but this doesn't matter for early game you know plus two to all maximum resistances while you have no endurance charges normally we don't generate any endurance charges so you, this is a very good shield actually very cheap to get lots of armor block life and maximum resistances spells are actually way deadlier uh, for this build because the dispute already has four to five plus lots of armor uh, yeah so you are actually very tanky against physical damage attack damage so that's why maybe this plus two resistances are actually way better for you so this is actually what i use at league starts after that uh, i'm gonna just put two options one is obviously better so because in the end you want to uh, reserve your herald of purities even more four link even five link with a elder base helmet which i'm gonna show you later that's why reserve reduction is actually very important so a shaper based sh shield with socket jumps have 15 percent or it can be 10 percent you just need to calculate your uh, own character maybe 10 percent is also enough because tier 2 is 10 percent tier 1 is 15 percent reduced reservation so this is actually where we put our generosity dread banner and pride gems you know our auras so they will actually have less reservation plus life plus resist if you want plus the most important other stat is recover five percent life when you block this is again in on shaper bases so definitely very good for survival ability helmet so let's take a look at the enchants first maybe plus one maximum sentinels as i explained in the jam section i believe so this actually increases your herald of purity minions and this is not dominating blow because they actually are better boss killers compared to dominating blows so plus one helmet enchant is actually very good for single target dps because each uh, must fast that herald of purity sentinels actually deals couple of million dps in the end game so definitely a good enchant um, if you have maybe reservation issues you can also get herald of purity reduced mana reservation early on so maybe you can easily reserve your mana if you have a uh, verse you know shield you know starter shield maybe you have some um reservation issues so that's why that is also good if you map mostly with this character there's actually another enchant uh, that is very good uh that actually increases your rare sentinel number for dominating blow uh, dominating blow sentinels rare sentinels obviously provides auras um buffs you know to you and nearby allies they're actually like mini aura bots so if you have that enchant you can actually summon two of them while mapping which is uh, more fun so that is a very good enchant for mapping and that's pretty much it for the enchants so for the helmet itself the most important stat is plus level of socketed minion gems because this is where we put our herald of purity which is obviously a minion so this applies to that uh, once the item level goes up you can also get plus three level of socketed minion gems which is gonna be more expensive because it only exists on 86 item level helmets so other than that life resistances obviously this is easy to find even at the leak start so this is your uh, low budget helmet after that you can just transition into maybe uh where's that yeah bone helmet because this has implicit of minion deal to increase damage again maybe plus two level of gems same stuff if you try to put plus three on this it's gonna be very expensive so i don't actually recommend that for medium budget actually so try to get only plus two life resist and that's gonna be it uh, if you have an enchanted helmet you do not use this because it is hard to find enchants on bone helmet it's gonna be expensive maybe you can use something with enchant not a bone helmet maybe all right it's gonna be cheaper but in the end your the actually the most expensive piece for this build is this is that is probably this one a helmet with elder base uh at least 86 so it can have plus three level of socketed minion jams also elder bases can have socketed jams are supported by level 20 or whatever the tier is minion damage so your herald property is going to be actually five linked plus uh <laughs> there is more 
Elder bases also can have nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage. So you can maybe um, what's that? craft this with fossils. Um, so possible fossils are probably this. Bound fossil for minion tanks. Uh, jack fossil for physical. And maybe Priston fossil for life. But uh, you, can, you should probably check Craft of Exile website to see the highest you know, chance to get these uh, stats. Maybe you can skip life, I'm not sure, but normally minion damage and also minion gem has actually a very high chance to get, you know, high weightings. But the hardest thing is to get actually that nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage. So definitely worth the investment in the end, this helmet provides millions of damage in the end. So this is your highest uh, investment. And also it is very hard to get an uh, labyrinth enchant on this one, definitely pay a visit to Forbidden Throw Discord. And find a trusted, you know, service provider that does labyrinth service. So pay some exalts, whatever the price is. So make sure that that guy uh, finds you a number of sentinel pretty enchant. So you don't even need to do that if you don't want to do labyrinths, all right? You can actually get uh, labyrinth service from TFT Discord. Uh, body armor. Belly of the Beast for leak start. Obviously, you can just start with the five link armor base because it is going to be easier to color. A rare chest for a couple of chaos, that's what you are gonna want to use at day one, obviously. But after that, a belly of the beast is very good because it provides armor, easier to color, and lots of life. Increased maximum life, that's why this chest actually provides a lot of life. Uh, for end game, this is what we use. You know, I actually made this build with a friend. I, let's say, upgraded this build. Because I actually haven't invested that much into this build. I normally play this with like maybe 10 exalt worth of investment most. But I actually have a subscriber who min max this build. That's why some of the end game upgrades are from that guy that I put in the pet of building. So Sakawa's Nest, which is actually a very popular body armor for also other uh, minion builds. A lot of attributes. Lightning resistance. Reduced reservation of skills, which is very good actually for this build. Aspect of Avian buff effect and uh, blah blah. Yeah. So what is Aspect of Avian? So if you want to use this item, you actually need an Aspect of Avian buff on one of your rare items. You actually need to craft that from Menagerie. That is a suffix, by the way. So one of your items need to have an open suffix. Uh, obviously, skip Helmet because Helmet is where we put our Herald of Purities. So you can just put this on maybe a rare ring amulet gloves belt wherever you see fit all right just don't put this on your um, helmet because that's where our herald of purity is that is very important so craft that i will also put the name of the beast on the screen just craft it as a suffix make sure the item has an open suffix so that item will provide you aspect of avian and then you need to reserve that because that is a buff actually make sure you um, reserve also that aura or buff whatever that is called and I will just put the what does that buff do, you know, on the screen so you can just read it. It basically provides DPS, double damage and some other stats, I believe. Just check the screen. So in the end, this provides reserve reduction plus um, a good damage buff for our minions. So definitely good for DPS. If you are looking for more DPS, that's actually, if you don't want more DPS, just stick to belly of the beast if you want. Even get a maybe plus one gem. Stuff like that, you know, belly of the beast, so your minions, uh, dominating blows can actually deal more DPS. You can also do that. Or just use any chest that you see fit. These are actually the only things that I can think of. Gloves. Uh, one of the cheapest pieces. Just to keep my life, uh, not life, obviously, you cannot keep your life. That is not something that uh, exists. <laughs> what is life cap, you know? Uh, just for some life and keeping your resistances, you know? Just put a lot of resistances live. That's it. This is your cheap glows. Uh, this is your. Uh, this next one is the um, more expensive one. Life resist, resist, chaos resist. Uh, that's why this is more expensive. Uh, you don't actually need this, but definitely helps sometimes, even uh, especially at the boss fight. So you can skip this, but you can sometimes notice this actually. Physical damage leech as mana. Uh, so if you reserve your mana a lot and if you don't have this kind of leech uh, you can also put this kind of physical damage leech as mana on your rings or amulet i believe 
uh, also on jewelry but yeah, not jewels um, jewels but we obviously don't want to use those kind of jewels so because we will lose dps so you can actually put this kind of leech so you can actually leech mana because sometimes in a boss if you hold your right button you know right mouse click that's where i use my dominating blow sometimes i notice that i am out of mana if i am playing with very little mana actually so depending on your mana reservation depending on how much mana you left this can actually help you a lot so consider getting some leech as mana on your gloves or one of your ring maybe but we will actually use unique rings later on so a uh, gloves is probably your best option boots uh not that crazy Early game, life, resist, movement speed. Movement speed is very important. After that, again, actually same stuff. You don't even need anything special. A lot of life, a lot of resistances. Uh, gloves and boots are actually your... Um, keeping your resist, you know, are for keeping your resist mostly. So maybe also put chaos resist on this if you want. And again, movement speed. Armor bases are obviously good because this is an armor and block build. And finally... If you bother doing some labyrinths, regenerate 2% of life per second if you were hit recently. This is good. You can also get movement speed if you haven't hit recently, if you want to move faster in maps. But you are gonna get attacked um, in the end because this is not a dodge build, you know. But obviously sometimes we block, but I'm not sure if that cancels that or not, I'm not sure. So maybe you can also get movement speed enchant, but regen life is probably better for bosses. Amulet, leak start, life resist, straightforward. If you need dexterity, you actually need uh, a dexterity based amulet or any jewelry that provides dexterity is actually good. For anoint, a cheap anoint, uh, Ravenous Horde, I'll just put it on the screen so you can see what that does, just for some extra DPS. So later on, once the um, what's that influenced items are on the market, you can get plus one strength gems on hunter bases, uh, which is very good. This works for both dominating blow and... Uh, Herald of Purity. So both of the minions are gonna get actually plus one. Uh, jam level is very important on this kind of build. So this actually, this is gonna provide a lot of DPS. So again, life resist, that's it. And again, dex base, obviously. And once you need some extra mana reservation later, also for anoint charisma, plus of mana reservation reduction. So final um, amulet is a double influenced one. Warlord plus hunter. So strength gems plus physical gems so you can actually get plus two uh, that's it again life you can also put avian that's what uh, we did again charisma anoint same stuff at maybe leak start or leveling if you find any you can use this maybe uniques and this also maybe can work because we use specter so i will just these are actually honorable honorable mentions you know maybe you can use this at early on you know yeah so yeah just check them out rings Early on, nothing special, just keep your resist and life. Once the minion damage rings are on the market, but these are actually drops from delve encounters, so there are gonna be lots of results after a couple of days, maybe a week, I'm not sure, depending on how many people play, you know, we will see how the leaks is gonna be, you know, future leaks. Uh, you can get uh, jewelry, uh, rings actually, because our amulet is mostly for plus one jam. Uh, minion deals damage. That is a good start for additional DPS, but in the end, if you need additional boss DPS and also reserve reduction, because we want to reserve our Herald of Purities a lot, Circle of Guild Unique Rings. So these have lots of combinations plus lots of implicit. So the good one for this build is Herald of Purity has reduced reservation, so you can reserve more mana. And Sentinels of Purity deals increased damage. That is also the Herald of Purity minions. So this will obviously boost our Herald of Purity. Uh, for Implicit, there is not that much crazy stuff for this build. But actually the most crazy stuff is probably Vulnerability Curse on hit. But that's gonna be probably very very expensive, you know. Uh, if you have the budget, go for that. You know, so you can easily apply Curse without doing anything. Uh, if you want obviously a cheaper version, just get Dexterity maybe. Attributes. Because Dexterity is something that this character needs, that's why Dexterity... Uh, you can easily put Dexterity on these rings, because these rings are actually very cheap. Because no one plays this kind of uh, melee minion build, actually. This is not a meta at all, very cheap build uh, overall. So these are very good rings, so try to get some good implicits as you see fit. Uh, finally belt, final piece. Leak start, life, resist. Armor maybe, strength for additional life, that's it, nothing special. 
After that, you can get a Stygian Vice, so it has a socket, so you can easily put a Ghastly Eye Jewel, which is Minion uh, Jewel. I'm going to explain Jewels in the Talent Tree section later on. Um, life, again, Resist, maybe some Flask stuff. Uh, this is a medium budget belt, by the way. And finally, your final bet. Uh, this is probably the best thing that I can think of. That's what we used. A Hunter Base for increased maximum life. So, max life, flat life, plus increased life. So, a lot of life. Resist, resist, that's it. This is actually not that expensive because this uh, missiles one resist. It has regenerate life, a uh, bad stat. I actually have a guide on how to craft Hunter Stygian Visors that I shoot years ago once they first introduced, you know, to the game in 3.9. Uh, that was the only guide back then. I'm not sure if any other people also saw and did that. But that's actually a very um, common way to craft Stygian Visors. So definitely check that video if you want to craft something good. And you can also make lots of profit while doing that. Lots of people in my Discord does that craft and they make huge money. So definitely check that video so you can craft yourself as Hunter Steam Wise if you want, you know, for um, way cheaper. This is where I'm going to explain the flasks. Life flask, uh, eternal life flask is obviously good. You can put bleed immunity, stun chink on it. Later on, if you have a corrupted blood immunity jewel, a gaslight jewel or a cluster jewel whatever it doesn't matter if you have immunity against corrupted blood you can safely use a blood of curry for more healing actually this also heals us in maven fight uh, most people still don't know this recover full life at the end of life uh, at the end of flask effect so in maven if you know that fight if you get hit by the lasers in the last phase you actually get some uh, debuff that blocks all of the healing but if you press this flask, you will just recover your life, even with that debuff. So maybe it is a bug, I don't know, but that works right now. So it is actually a very flask overall, uh, way better compared to an eternal life flask. In the end, uh, once you fix that corrupted blood issue, so make sure that you have a corrupted blood immunity, corrupted jewel, yeah. Quicksilver flask, freeze or um, maybe poison immunity, I'm not sure, because this build is almost immune to curse. I actually don't use curse flask sometimes. Because we only get 20% uh, effect from curses. Because of Guardian, we ha normally have 8% reduced effect. So yeah, you can fa safely skip a curse flask if you want. But if you see that you need more, maybe, protection, just use a curse flask. So in the end, put curse, freeze, or poison immunity, or maybe bleed. I'm not sure, just put an immunity. But freeze immunity is very important, so definitely put it somewhere. Um, curse flask, some dodge. I'm using this mostly for phasing, so I don't get stuck and die, something like that. Um, so phasing lets you go past through enemies. I all crafted armor to this, so I can have way more armor. This is a global armor, by the way. It doesn't have to do anything with the quartz flask. You can just also craft that armor to anywhere else if you want. If you still need immunity, put maybe freeze or whatever you want on this. Basalt flask, physical damage reduction. Make sure you craft this with reduced charge use or max charges. So you can actually maybe drink this twice in a boss fight. Because this consumes lots of charges. If you don't craft one of those that I said right now. You cannot actually drink this twice in a boss fight. That's why crafting plus 20 charge or reduced charge consumed. So that actually uh, reduces the charge to 30 something. Um, that's how you can drink it twice. Again, just put anything that you see fit, any immunity or armor, whatever you are missing. Rumi's Concoction, very good for this kind of build. Armor Flask plus lots of block, attack and spell. This is your one of the good uh, defensive flasks. And that's actually it. That's all about the flasks. In this part, we are going to take a look at the talent tree. I'm going to explain the jewels and uh, in the end, we also use cluster jewels. So we are going to check those. And Pantheons, and I believe that's it. So first of all, let, while they are in Path of Building, let's just show that. So right now there are only two trees here, but I will also add leveling trees here. Like leveling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. So check this part here, obviously, for that leveling trees. So this is a League Star cheap tree. This is end game with cluster jewels in the end. You want to use them for more DPS. So just check this. Depending on your budget, depending on what you are doing, do not miss any talent trees. Also in the notes section, maybe it is missing anything right now. I will just upload it, uh, update it before uploading the video, obviously. This is a leveling section, uh, what gem to get at what level, what act, you know. 
so you don't miss anything this is mostly for new players so also check this out here and also there are equipments in item sections obviously league start cheap gear medium budget and high budget so definitely check this out depending on what you are doing so don't miss anything this is the all-in-one pet of wheeling um, that is prepared by me so let's take a look at the jewels what kind of jewels to use so first of all god light jewels are obviously for minions that's why we are all gonna use them so the most important stuff this i'm gonna list i believe four or five stats all right so you don't actually have that much uh, options so obviously life uh, means deal physical damage but this needs to be actually a very high tier otherwise it doesn't actually provide that much dps so if you have a good tier tier one tier two tier three maybe but anything lower than that it doesn't very important so yeah try to get a decent physical damage uh, you can put this one but actually the most important thing is where is that jewel these are mostly low budget jewels right now yeah this one minions deal uh, increase damage the percentage can change if you have used the minion skill recently which is obviously all the time so this is actually your uh, best bet for dps so life plus minions deal damage if you have used the minion skill recently after that depending on your budget a good physical damage roll minions deal uh, minions have attack speed i believe i will just put it i'll just write the list on the screen all right so you know what to get and for some quality of life improvements and for some defense actually make sure you put blind and taunt on one of your jewels you know the total two jewels maybe or just put the boat on one jewel i believe that can exist a blind on hit and also taunt on hit so your minions actually blinds enemies so they have less accuracy so you will be tankier plus taunt so your minions can actually taunt so sometimes you don't even get hit you know so yeah, they are good quality of life improvements. So these are actually the stats. I'm going to just write them all on the screen. So just check that. And I am moving to the next part. Uh, these are actually the only jewels that we use. This build doesn't even use the Vulture's Eye because it's a minion build. You don't need that. Um, so yeah, you can also craft these jewels maybe yourself while the alterations are cheap. Because actually the best, you know, the GG ones are very expensive. Because I believe also the Carrying Golem builds use these kind of jewels. That's why you can also use alteration orbs at early days once they are cheap and craft your own jewels if you want some very good ones. So let's take a look at the cluster jewels, what to buy later on. So for large cluster, 8 points obviously. Rotten Claws means have chance to impale and Renewal means have double damage chance. Um, you don't even need a third one, these are the only good ones for this build. These are actually uh, way cheaper compared to the 3 stat ones, you know. That's why I have, I have picked these. So just get Rotten Claws, Renewal, and that's it. Uh, very cheap, very easy to get, actually. Way cheaper compared to other large minion clusters, yeah. So for me, me, uh, mid what, what am I talking? <laughs> I'm trying to say minion, but I am actually I actually want to say medium. So for medium cluster jewels. The base type, minions deal damage while you are affected by a herald. Four or five points, it doesn't matter because as you can see, the fifth point is actually here, which we don't use. So we don't, we don't want to waste any points. That's why five points is actually doesn't matter. But if this were a six points, there will also going to be one of these here. So you have to get one of that, which is a waste of points, actually. Uh, so don't get a six point medium cluster, all right? Also, don't get a nine, ten, whatever, large. You have to get eight points large, all right? Uh, so yeah, what we want. Disciples, means deal damage while you are affected by a herald. Summon sentinels have cooldown recovery rate. This is actually very important. Let's just check this. Where is that? Herald of Purity, Crusade Slam. So this is the highest thing that this guy does. Uh, Crusade Slam. These, are, these guys are, are uh, can actually do lots of attacks. Default attack, Slam, Crusade Slam. So this is the highest damage dealer. Um, skill cooldown 3.10 seconds right now. Without this, 3.5. And I believe I have more of this. So this is normally has around 5 second cooldown, I believe. Let's just check. Yeah, 5 second cooldown normally. Or maybe even more than that. I'm not sure if that only showed 5. So this is actually very good. So they have lower cooldown. So they can deal this most powerful attack very often. That's why Disciples is very important. Plus, uh, this one, Immigrating Portents. Means deal damage, increase damage, and movement speed, that's not very good. Uh, that's not very bad, actually. <laughs> I spoke wrong. Uh, movement speed, because it's a melee, melee minion build, so faster minions obviously helps. 
I believe these are the same disciples immigrating portents. And what's this? Yeah, same stuff. These are very cheap. That's why I picked these. Uh, probably disciples is your number one choice. Maybe you can also use something else if you know anything better. But these are these were very cheap because I wanted to keep this build as cheap as possible. Because in the end, you obviously want to invest in for a good shield and a helmet and maybe good amulet. Other than that, this build is actually very cheap. For small cluster, if you have you know good level, um, you can use petals for even more life. I actually haven't even put the jewels here yet. Uh, there are some missing stuff here right now. For small petal, this is what petal does. A lot of life. So if you have good level, you can just use petals. Or if you want uh, more life, this build can easily achieve more than 5.5k life with good gear, more than 6k life, which is more than enough. Um, you can also put ghastly jewels, obviously, for more DPS, which is probably way better. So I'm only using one petal right now. I will probably put Castle Jewels here and um, try to adjust the tree. And finally, a thread of hope, small ring. These actually have lots of variations, so medium, large, very large. So this is actually a small ring, thread of hope. Make sure you buy that so I can get this one. Grave Pack, this provides a lot of damage. That's why you want this. So we actually wasted one, two, three, four points, but absolutely worth. Uh, if you know anything better, go for that. But a thread of hope plus this, so this actually lets you get this. Uh, you don't even have to, you know, connect the tree. That's what thread of hope does. Great effect, lots of damage, double damage actually. That is why this gives a lot of DPS. Double damage is simply broken in this game. That's why you want to get some of these also from cluster jewels. And other than that, I believe everything is the same. Let's just check. Uh, yep. So let's continue on with the pantheons. For large, Arakali is good, reduce effect of shock, shock duration, cast, resist against damage over time, avoid lightning damage, blah blah blah, very good. Also you can use uh, maybe Lunaris, this is actually better for mapping. So while mapping, uh, I highly recommend you to use Lunaris and get that final upgrade, avoid projectiles that have chained. Because we have lots of minions, if the monsters have chain effect, if the map has chain modifier, you will notice that the arrows actually change to you. Even if you haven't got hit early on, uh, one of your stupid minions are gonna get hit by some arrows and bam, they will just chain to you and you will get lots of damage. I, I mean lots of damage. That's just simply stupid. I, I uh, actually noticed this in ultimatums, the current leak that I am shooting this video. Uh, I actually did an ultimatum with chain. Uh, chain modifier in the map I believe and I was like what's going on I am always at low health you know that is simply broken so I highly suggest you to play maps with Lunaris if you bother swapping maybe in bosses maybe just use something else maybe Solaris this is actually good for bossing and maybe Arakali I'm not sure but Lunaris is way better because of that chain uh, avoidance I highly recommend you to get this for miner I mostly use Aberat because I want to be unaffected by burning ground plus reduce ignite duration on you because this character isn't immune to ignite uh, that's why I want that 50% reduce ignite duration uh, let's just check real quick if any of these are good not that much actually maybe this but this got nerfed a couple of leagues ago it is right now very bad in my opinion I don't want this I don't like this right now but maybe you can do this if your chaos resist is very low um, yeah probably Aberat uh that's my go-to option you know well we have come to the end of the guide don't forget to subscribe like join my discord if you want just mute the channel because we talk a lot all right <laughs> that's why i highly recommend you to mute the channel Ch check from time to time uh chat with us you know that's it and i will also upload more league starter builds so definitely don't uh, miss those i will see you later bye bye